Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff McNunn, and I'm the Senior Director of Industry and Theatrical at TIFF. I'm joined by our close partner, Mahernez Lenton, Senior Director of CBC Films. We are both so excited to have you with us as we celebrate screenwriting by announcing the newest cohort of TIFF Writer Studio participants and the winner of this year's TIFF CBC Films Screenwriter Award. As you join us today, we encourage you to reflect on the land that you are on, who the traditional keepers of the land are, what the treaty relationship is, or if it's unceded territory. We are located on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee. The territory is within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant and is home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We are very grateful to work on this land. We are streaming via TIFF Industries Twitter and Facebook feeds and the TIFF Originals YouTube channel. After reviewing hundreds of submissions and selecting some of the brightest emerging talents, we're thrilled to make these announcements today. I'd like to thank our lead sponsor, Bell, our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris and Visa, as well as our major public supporters, the government of, on of Ontario, the government of Canada and the city of Toronto. TIFF's industry programming is generously supported by Ontario Creates and Telefilm. For the fourth consecutive year, we are proud to offer the CBC TIFF Film Screenwriter Award, which provides an excellent opportunity for one writer to receive $15,000, project support from an international script consultant, and access to this year's Toronto International Film Festival and Industry Conference. None of this would be possible without CBC Films, and we're grateful for their unwavering support. I'm happy to announce this year's participants for TIFF Writers Studio, a five-day immersive program for writers working on their first or second feature film scripts with international script consultants and mentors. The program will take place entirely online in 2021 and run from March 8th to 12th. For the first time in 10 years, yes, it's the 10th anniversary, Writer Studio was open to international applicants and garnered hundreds of applications from across the globe. The eight projects, projects selected to participate in this year's program are From the West, the Sun Will Rise from writer-director Maha Al-Santi, Saudi Arabia. Phoenix from writer-director Jonathan Beliusir, Canada. Lightyear from writer Adriana De Leonardo, Canada. Now I am a bear from writer-producer Jason Filitro, Canada. Mahal Safari from writer-director Abraham Gazahan, Ethiopia. Sabbatical from writer-director Caribou Ledija, South Africa. The Cottage from writer-director Sylvina Shinisser, Spain, and Ma Rama from writer-director Terato Stepard, New Zealand. Congratulations to all the selected participants and thank you to our consultants, speakers, and the entire industry team for their hard work in the lead up to this fantastic program. Here to announce this year's recipient of the TIFF CBC Films Screenwriter Award is an incredible champion of Canadian filmmakers, Mahernas Lenton. Thanks so much to the TIFF team, Jeff, Jane, and Brittany, and this year's jury members, writer-director Brad Fraser, industry consultant Larissa Gutmanis, and last year's award recipient, Elise Friedman. The shortlisted projects in this year's award were no less than incredible, making this a very close competition. This year's TIFF CBC Film Screenwriter Award jury selected the transformative survivalist tale Switchback by Melanie Jones of Vancouver, BC. As a jury, we love this devious and surreal drama about transformation and identity set on the West Coast Trail that never prescribes to a single genre. It in fact challenges the audience to explore the complexities of primal feminine with such exhilarating spirit 
that is truly an on the edge of your seat experience. The jury would also like to acknowledge writer-director Amy Jo Johnson's dramatic love story, Ends of the Earth, with an honorable mention as the runner-up submission. A little bit about CDC. We're committed to being the public space for critically acclaimed Canadian films, and our continued investment spans initiatives including pre-buys and acquisitions for our channels, and true to our mandate, CBC Films prioritizes features led by women, Indigenous, LGBTQ+, and equity-seeking filmmakers. We selectively invest in high-quality productions in a variety of genres, and we're interested in contemporary stories that reflect, represent, and reframe the Canadian experience. Switchback exemplifies all of these qualities perfectly. And in partnership with TIFF, we are thrilled to champion Melanie and her project through its development. All of this being said, we're also excited to welcome Melanie to the event, along with 2019 TIFF CBC Film Screenwriter Award recipient, Tracy Deer, to sit down in a short discussion for us to discover more about the project, Melanie and the development process ahead. And please join me in welcoming Tracy Deer and Melanie Jones. Tracy, over to you. Thank you so much. I'm here with Melanie Jones, our winner. So thrilled to get into this conversation with you, Melanie. Um, first and foremost, can you give just a very brief introduction to, to our viewers on, on who you are and, and what you've done in this industry so far? Sure. Um, yeah, I am a filmmaker in BC. Um, I, I actually started out in the art world as a visual artist, um, making sculpture and installation and then slowly moving into video art. And that kind of took me to film school eventually, <laughs> um, kind of a natural progression. And I just fell in love with film and uh, in particular, the kind of collaborative uh, nature of it, because um, I love making art, but sometimes it can be quite solitary. And the, the beauty of film is that you're always with your film family and you're always, you know, telling stories as a group. And it's such an exciting way to be creative. Um, so I went to film school and then I made uh, lots of shorts, just learning how to make films and, and trying to get better. And then um, I was very fortunate to participate in the Women in the Director's Chair. Uh, program and this was back when they uh, were going to Banff so we got to go to Banff for three weeks and stay at the the center there which was just thrilling as a creative uh, person to be in that environment um, and since then I've really been focused more on writing my own uh, films writing screenwriting uh, writing scripts um, sometimes for hire but mostly for my own intended production um, and Switchback is uh, my third such feature script uh, that I have worked on. So I, I made my first feature about five years ago, which is called FSM. And since then, I've been uh, making a couple of shorts and working a little bit for hire. And then now I'm hopefully going to be ma making Switchback next. Amazing. Well, huge congratulations on winning this award. Thank you. I, I, I was in your spot two years ago, and it was so exciting to, to, to be at that moment because we all know how long the writing process can be and how scary and sort of filled with, you know, just it's a roller coaster. So um, congratulations. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about the story? What is the story about? Um, the story uh, is a, a sort of a, a twist on a survival drama um, about a couple that uh, go hiking uh, on the West Coast Trail out here in, in BC and um, sort of mishaps befall them. And, uh, you know, they run into trouble. They run into some some pretty severe challenges. And the fo the film ultimately focuses on the, the woman's journey, the, the woman and the couple, as she uh, sort of has to fight against the elements and uh, kind of get in touch with her primal self. Uh, through the course of the film, and I don't want to give the 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 ending away, so I, I will kind of leave it there. <laughs> okay. And what about the themes? What are the themes you're exploring in in your story? I'm really, um, I think that just in all my projects and all my writing and and films that I'm drawn to, I am really interested in kind of ex existential questions. 
So questions of self, of, you know, who am I? What am I? Why am I? You know, what is my um, purpose? And, um, you know, that is really the core of this film is, is this character who it feels very constrained by her regular life, by her, um, let's say, social expectations around her and things like that. And she longs to be free, but she doesn't really have the, the means to um, explain that or describe that, what that looks like. She just knows it kind of intrinsically. And the, the experience of this trip and, and in particular, all the things that go wrong on this trip kind of expose that truth um, over time. And, and eventually she's left with, you know, nothing else to grapple with except that truth and kind of either having to accept it or reject it fully. Um, and that's really kind of what I was interested in exploring was this idea of like, if you take everything else away, if you strip everything else away, who are you? really like what's what's left what's the what's the core um and that um you know in film what's so exciting is you can do things you can't do in real life so you might ask those questions in real life of yourself but like you know there's there's limitations on what your your um reality presents but in film you can kind of play with uh dreams and and surrealism and those kinds of things to explore that in a more interesting kind of visual way and that's um in particular, what I'm excited about uh, with the film. And can you take us through um, some of some of that exploration you're doing in that non-realistic way? Some of the, the fun ways you're going to be exploring these themes. Sure. Um, yeah, I I'm really interested in sort of uh, visual themes and and motifs, and uh, I think that you know that probably obviously comes from my visual art background. Is like I'm strongly drawn to the way that images and sounds and music can do things and express things that we don't have words for. Um, and so there's sort of thematic uh, imagery that runs through the film related to uh, the character's journey. And I sort of took the, um, what are what are considered to be the universal conflicts, although I, I have trouble with the language because they are phrased as man versus man, man versus nature, man versus himself. and I sort of appropriated that and turned it into woman versus self, woman versus nature, woman versus man, um, because my protagonist is female. And um, I've sort of linked a visual motif to each of those conflicts through the film. So the idea being that um, you will see these little motifs like pop up throughout the film. Um, one of them is water, one of them is blood, um, one of them is falling and they are always linked to some specific sort of choice or moment on that journey in relation to that specific conflict. And obviously, like, I hope that this just sort of weaves into the visual poetry of the film uh, in the end for the viewer. But for me, it, it's very exciting to think that way about telling the story. Um, and I'm I'm looking forward in the next draft to kind of even further looking at ways to like pare down the dialogue because I really want the film to be um, maybe a little bit more minimalist in that in that part and a little more um, expansive in the visual treatment, let's say. Okay, cool. And why is it important for you to tell this story? Oh boy, it, you know, it's, um, that's a tough question, but I, I, I think at least for myself, you know, especially since I started writing, for me, the writing is always very personal. Um, so it's, you know, it's coming from a personal place. And although I haven't literally been through the journey that my character is going to go through, um, I think that I see her, her story as a maybe like a, a metaphor for things that I have dealt with in my own life and, and kind of trying to translate that into poetry in a way. Um, so it's definitely connected to a, a very personal um, exploration of self that I myself am always going through. And I think most creative people are probably going through, uh, you know, on and off in their creative life and in their regular life. Um, and I think the best way I've, I've found to kind of like describe this, although it's it's quite a, a tangent of a metaphor, is that I, I sometimes feel like the way that you know the world and society and everything makes me feel about you know my choices or where the limits that are put upon me 
um, that I kind of go through life a little bit like clenched, tight, mm -hmm. sort of like the idea of like who I really am is in the center of my hand, but I'm living like this. I'm never really letting that out because I have to keep all these sort of walls around me or some of them I chose, some of them were put upon me, et cetera. And you know, the story is essentially like what happens when that opens and you are, you are free from all those things. Like what, do, what, what kind of choices would you make? Would you make different kinds of choices in that situation? And that to me is like something I think I'm doing every day uh, just as a person is trying to answer those questions for myself. So then to put that in a story through the, you know, the metaphor of, of film language, I think is um, that's where the, the personal comes through and, and why I really want to tell this kind of story. I love that. I really do. I loved like, again, visual, we're visual people, right? I love <laughs> like the fist and the thing. Um, absolutely. And I think it, I think that is that universal truth that I think, I think transcends just being a woman, but definitely um, relates to our, to all women and our experience within our society. So super excited for people to see how you're going to explore that. Um, I'd love to talk about the writing process. Um, you know, the, you've talked about it coming from sort of a personal place and and your own exploration of your own life as a woman. But then there's also there's there's the characters and the fictional aspect of it and the surrealism of it. What was that process like building your story from the blank page to where you are now? Mm hmm. It, it's been a really interesting, long journey. I, I um, have described it to my friends as like, I feel like this, this script has, was a caterpillar and then, it, you know, did the cocoon and then it came out and it wasn't a butterfly yet. It was still some other thing. And then it went back into the cocoon and then it came back out again. So it's kind of gone through a lot of transition over um, approximately the last five years. I've been working on this from like inception to to now. And, um, you know, initially I had envisioned it essentially as like a, a, a very straightforward drama. So it was just about people, just about relationships between people and choices and, and whatnot. And when I kind of touched upon or happened upon this concept of taking it into the surreal a little bit more, um, that's when this, the idea really started to, to sing. And I think where it really started to gain traction with others as well. So when I would pitch it and I would pitch the, the twist, people would be like, oh, that's really exciting. And, you know, get really invested. And so I think that that um, emboldened me to go farther and farther and farther with it. And um, I, I did quite a few drafts, um, you know, uh, small changes types drafts um, in the early time that then like none of that kept into the later drafts because once the the new sort of direction came in it was like writing it from page one again and really the only things that were the same were like they were going on a hike and it was a couple and that was kind of all that that stuck around um but i've been really fortunate to uh my last round of kind of developing this i did through the writer studio um program so uh, you know it's wonderful to kind of be continuing that journey like to know that this draft came out of that process was so improved by that experience and then now i get to keep on working with tiff and cbc and and um, continue to improve it in that same uh sort of uh caliber of feedback and all that kind of stuff so yeah i'm very looking forward to the next you know draft drafts you know that will come uh, come out of this process that is a perfect segue because I do want to talk a little bit more about Tiff's writer studio. We both mm -hmm. we both went through that program, and um, my script that won this two years ago, same thing. I went through the Tiff studio, and it was just fantastic. So, can you tell us a little bit about what you learned through that program, what you took away from that program, and how that program helped your script get to the the, the place it is now? Yes, the. Um TIFF Studio was uh, tremendously um, impactful on the draft. Um, I think when I came into the program, I, I knew a little bit where my problems were in, in the script. I knew that I was really struggling with the beginning. Um, and I, it's funny because having made my previous film, that also was my problem with my film was 
was finding the way to enter the story was like the biggest challenge for me for some reason that that's the place that I struggle. Um, so I, I came in kind of with a plan with knowing like, this is the part I need to figure out and I mean, I need to get help with. Um, and I think that was actually a really good way of approaching it to, to actually ask myself what were the issues that I, that I needed to fix. Um, because then I could be very focused about the kinds of questions that I asked the mentors that I asked, um, my main mentor and my partner, um, you know, saying like, these are the things that I know are not working, but from your perspective, like, what do you like about them? What do you not like about them? Do you think there's anything there worth saving? You know, it was really um, nice to focus. But then, of course, you get the the rest of the feedback as well. You get the the more general feedback. And that, I think, honing in on the beginning helped me answer a lot of questions that I had not yet answered for myself. And then the breadth of the program's topics, so touching on everything from um, pitching to like story structure to the one-on-one -on -one sessions with the mentor, like all of those things bred so much information. And I got so excited that I was like going home from the studio to the hotel and like writing at night because it was just so, so thrilling to be getting like new ideas for how to solve old problems essentially uh, in the script. So I, I found that programming, you know, it was only a week, but it was possibly like the best week ever as far as, you know, being writing and, and being just immersed in writing and talking about writing. Um, and I, I think, uh, I definitely can credit that time to this this draft and the success of this draft for sure. That's awesome. I know I know for me, part of the program was being able to spend time with other screenwriters. You mentioned it earlier. Um, the collaborative environment of creation is so important. But as writers, it's very it's very similar to what you were talking about as being an artist. It's very it could be very solitary. So being able to meet and talk about these issues with other writers, I know definitely helped me feel less alone and less um, overwhelmed by the struggles I was having with the writing process. Did you find the same? Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the coolest things about spending time with other writers, especially in that like focused situation where you're all there for the same reason, you're all actually going through the same thing, which is like getting notes, having to talk through your ideas with your mentor, et cetera. And of course, because we were paired up, we also read uh, one person's other script. Uh, like I read my partner's script and they read mine. And so you weren't only getting your mentor's feedback, you were getting your peers' feedback as well, which was super helpful because they all have different experience with writing than you do. So, you know, sometimes people have been working as a writer, some not, you know, so it was really interesting. And I think the biggest thing was just even being exposed to all the different ways that people were writing. So everybody was writing differently, different style, even different approach to like building their characters, building scenes. And just to be exposed to that is like an education in and of itself um, that you don't get if you're just writing alone. Obviously you, you kind of need to see, and it's more than just reading other people's scripts, it's reading them and then actually talking to them about how they wrote them. That, that takes it to that next level. Um, and I, I found that just so exciting. I mean, I am a teacher as well, so I love school and I love being a student um, and getting back into that uh, headspace. So I, I think the, the workshop environment is something that I, I love to be in, in general. And what of the next steps uh, coming are you most excited about? I think I'm really excited to get feedback from, uh, I think the jury probably, and, and uh, from TIFF and from CBC on the script as it is now, and then diving back into writing. I, I think I'm always most um, motivated and excited about writing when I have like an influx of new thoughts and new ideas. It's It can be pretty, I mean, I'm sure you know this, it can be pretty easy to kind of get in a rut with solving a problem or or solving a character or a scene or even a piece of dialogue and you're just like because i only have one brain i can't I, I can only think of so many things by myself but even just somebody saying a couple of words to me will can trigger a totally new thought that i didn't have before and it can unlock things it can really open things up so i think the feedback 
um, working with the script consultant and working into the next draft is like, I'm the most excited about that because I think that's really immediate. It's like, it's going to happen quickly. Um, but I think ultimately, of course, I'm most excited about hopefully getting to make the film um, and, and the ways that this will parlay into um, that happening. And I know you just made your film, did you not as well? So it's so exciting to see that, you know, you took it from this prize into into production like so quickly it's, it's it's inspiring and it makes me feel okay like it's possible that i'm gonna get to make my film now <laughs> absolutely well i'm really really excited for all the all all what's to come for you and i hope i hope you enjoy it uh, my last question is advice you may have for the aspiring screenwriters out there as well as those of us who have been doing it and you know still struggle and face self-doubt um what what advice do you have for all of us oh that's a good one <laughs> i advice for other uh writers i think you have to write that but that's not new like everybody says that um but i think don't discount the time where you're not physically writing as not time writing because sometimes you have to spend time writing in your head you know thinking breaking through those uh frustrating problems that you can't quite solve in a in a less tangible way like i was talking before about the difference between visual language and you know written language is like if i could just say it then i would just say it but I can't like that's the problem is that I, I'm trying to translate like a dream into words and that's not always the easiest thing to do. So sometimes it takes time, but sometimes it just takes that time in your head to kind of percolate and and ferment and kind of grow into the words that you can actually put on the page. And I I have, you know, in the past, I've gotten a little bit down on myself even about oh, it's, I'm not spending enough time in the chair writing, but if I actually think about all the time I spend journaling or doing other things that are actually feeding into that writing, then I go, oh, no, no, wait, I do like literally write every day. It's just not always script pages that I write every day. Sometimes it's other things or, or other ways. So I think, yeah, just, you know, writing is bigger than just putting, you know, dialogue down. It's, it's all those other parts of the process. And the more that you can kind of get feedback, talk it out, um, I do my best work sometimes just speaking uh, about it with other people. So brainstorm sessions and those things. And I consider those to be essentially writing sessions as well, because I always take stuff away that I end up using <laughs> later in the script. That is such great advice. And I agree. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of beating oneself up for not sitting down. And then there's this idea that, oh, I'm procrastinating, I'm procrastinating, but you're right that the story needs to sort of live and percolate. And sometimes I'm doing the dishes or I'm about to fall asleep and then the solution just comes up. So I, I think that's fantastic advice. Uh, I want to thank you so much for spending time with us today. And again, on behalf of all of us, congratulations. And uh, I can't wait to see your film. Thank you so much. It's been really nice to get to meet you and uh, talk to you today too.